Every day at Bakersfield College, our students are moving toward their goals. Why aren't you with them? Is it cost? Family obligation? Maybe you don't feel prepared for college life. The good news is we're prepared to help you. You have yet to realize how much help and support is waiting for you at Bakersfield College. Learn more now on Equity TV. Good morning, I'm Francis Mayer and this is Equity TV. Equity TV is a program that's put together by my employer, Bakersfield College, for the betterment of the entire community. What we do here is we show you success stories. We show you people who have successfully cleared the barriers of entry and gone on to Bakersfield College to obtain a degree or just to obtain a little self-confidence and knowledge. Maybe the wiring in your house is going bad. Well, we've got a class for that. But we also have people who are coming out of really solid situations, like say a military career, but they need to learn a new skill set because were you, were you 11 Bravo, Wes? <laughs> and well, 11 Bravo sounds awesome. That's because it is awesome. You carried a rifle. That's right. And engaged uh, hostiles. Yep. My, my the mission is to destroy, uh, to get, take, uh, get close to the enemy and destroy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a spreadsheet for that. Yeah. <laughs> you need like an M5, I think. In fact, I'm going to point that just at your mouth a little bit there. Right. And, um, and, and in the course of, um, of doing that work, you did pay uh, the second to highest price a human being can pay. You did lose your legs in a combat situation, correct? Uh, yes, sir, I did. And uh, now you, you have prosthesis you get around on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was uh, blessed to be in an opportunity in a place where uh, Walter Reed, where I was able to do my recovery. And uh, I, I think it's a very successful recovery. I'm able to walk around and do uh, my enjoy daily life, you know, normally. So yeah, yeah, and you were just telling me that you take your girl to, you have a six-year-old daughter. Yes, sir. And you take her to SeaWorld, and, uh, and you get around it, and everybody knows that's a lot of walking at any of those parks. Yeah, you know, uh, especially with a six-year-old that wants to see uh, the world. And, uh, <laughs> yes, they, want, <laughs> they have boundless energy, too. Can you bottle that for me? Um, uh, Wes, let, let's talk for a second about the transition. Um, you, where, were, where did you go to high school? I went to uh, Ridgeview High School, uh, graduating in 2002. And then you enlisted in the Marine Corps? No, in the Army. I uh, oh. went in straight into the Army right after high school. Uh, you know, I was a senior when 9-11 happened, and I said I have to do something for, for my country. I have to do something for, for this great nation. And uh, I thought the best way to uh, serve my country was by serving my country in the military. So I enlisted. And, uh, Wesley, when... How did the Barrientos family react to you going into the military? Think it was a good idea? Did they have any idea you were going to be thrust into combat? Uh, no, actually, uh, the way it, it was is that uh, I was the first uh, person in my family to graduate from high school. Oh, so they wow. had really hopes for me. Uh, you know, we came from Guatemala, so uh, I was actually born in Guatemala. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, we came here. They really had uh, high hopes for me and this and that. And uh, when I graduated from high school, everybody was so proud. And I said, I have to do something. And my mom, although she was a little upset, she understood what I had to do. And uh, I didn't tell her I was going to be an infantryman. I didn't tell her I was going to be in combat. I told her I was actually going to be in an office pushing paper. Ah, yeah. you little don't tell mom lies. <laughs> but you, you didn't do that. You went to a, to a hostile combat situation in the Middle East. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, I, right after uh, basically in uh, AIT, I went to, uh, I went to Iraq in, uh, in 2003. And I was there for, uh, for a long time. My first deployment, and uh, when three times after two, two more times after that. So, so wait, you spent three, almost three years, out of country. Yes, uh, in, in Iraq. Um, you know, uh, it was my initial the enlistment was only for two years since I'm changed, and uh, I couldn't let my my boys go by themselves. Right. So uh, I reenlisted uh, to go back to the front to to be where the metal meets the meat. Yeah, hmm. uh, just because I couldn't. I couldn't let my boys down. Right. And uh, I stayed in. And I went two more times after my reenlistment. And, uh, yeah. Now, did you reenlist knowing full well that uh, you were going to be going back to war? Yes, I did. I did it. Uh, actually, after I came back, I had actually changed uh, uh, things a little bit. I was working for a little bit in an office, and uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. And, so uh, w what is that transition like? Because um, we have a lot of people in the community who say they don't want to come to college because oh, I'm just not used to school. You were in a combat situation, correct. Wes. Uh, what was that like coming home and getting adjusted to going back to school? 
Uh, you know, uh, just going back to just coming back home is an adjustment itself. Uh, you know, got to change your lingo. Uh, got to stop swearing so much, you know, <laughs> especially around your mom or something. <laughs> you know, my mom is very dear to my heart. You're hearing me uh, right. talk to her, uh, talk about her a lot. Uh, she's a, a person I'm very proud of in my life. And uh, so, yeah, she, uh, you know, just coming back and readjusting to people in general, but coming back and readjusting to a uh, school. Uh, going back to, uh, being, when I went back, I was uh, 28 years old. I'd been out of school for 10 years and, uh, it was just a, uh, not a boy anymore. No, 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 definitely not a boy. You've seen the hordes of war and been overseas and <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, and, uh, I, I've had a lot of miles on, on me and, uh, definitely look different than everybody else because, you know, of course I have prosthetics on, but just walking into a situation with a whole bunch of 18 year old kids, they still live with their mom, <laughs> and uh, it, it was a different situation. It was an adjusting period. And uh, were you annoyed? Yes, uh, actually, I was. Uh, not because of the uh, the immaturity of the kids. It was mainly because uh, it created a lot of anxiety inside of me uh, because I've been through all the things I've been to. It was a lot of anxiety being inside a classroom surrounded by a whole bunch of people that that I didn't trust. Not you know nothing against them, but uh, you know I just didn't know them. Or they didn't have that trust with them. You, so was, you went from a situation though where there were a lot of opportunities to prove one's trustworthiness, right? Absolutely. Whereas in the, in in this world, um, we don't have too many opportunities. But you could find out, I would imagine, in the battlefield, what a guy's worth pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, uh, over there it's uh, uh, you know doggy dog world, and uh, you find out who has your back in an instant, right? And uh, who doesn't? You can tell the caliber of a person in an instant, and here. It's so easy to hide behind shades and clouds and uh, <laughs> give a different perception, you know, kind of like sure. the Instagram pictures, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's filters that people can use on their personalities. Yeah. How did you stick with it, though? There had to be times when you wanted to quit or just say, hey, I, I don't want to I don't want to go to school anymore because you're, you're telling me you had anxiety in the classroom. Right. Well, you know, uh, one of the things is that uh, I went and I met uh, Paul Beckworth and uh he was a professor at that time, a history professor, and he tracked me down. He asked me to come in and uh, visit the, the Veterans Lounge, and I did. And I saw, and I knew a lot about the Veterans Lounge before because I knew the, the first president uh, that started in 2009, which is uh, J.R. Browning. And I knew him very well, and I got to know him. And so I knew a lot about the club, but when I got there, it was a completely different thing than what I had thought it would be. And uh, I said, I... There's, there's potential here. I can do so much here. And it gave me a drive, and it gave me a reason to keep going in school. You know, besides that, I, I have to show my daughter I'm not a quitter, you know. Right. But uh, uh, it gave me another drive, another reason to stay in school, and uh, which was the veterans and making it better for them there. But you have made it better, <coughs> and obviously uh, the, the, the hiring of Tina Mendoza has been huge yes. and has been a critical bridge between veterans and the, and the process at Bakersfield College for success. Uh, but, but now you, I, I wonder, what, what are you going to do next? How do you follow <laughs> this act? I mean, you've recovered from grievous injuries, life-threatening injuries in Iraq. Uh, you have accomplished a lot of things at BC, been a huge jolt to the veterans program here. What's next? Uh, you know, uh, I, I am a man of God. I'm a man of faith, and uh, I put it all in, in his hands. And whatever he has planned for me in the future, you know, for me, all I can do is uh, stay stay myself. I I go my life, and sometimes, you know, there's some rough days. Sometimes there's some good days. But all I can do is uh, stay true to myself and uh, have trust and faith in God that he's going to guide me in the right path. Well, amen to that. But but do you see yourself like? Does your heart kind of tell you that you're headed towards becoming a firefighter, <laughs> or a high school teacher, or like what neighborhood do you think you're going to be in? Uh, you know, my heart is telling me to uh, keep helping uh, my community. So uh, whatever comes along from there, uh, I'm I'm just going to do whatever I have to do for my community. Uh, I've 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 been trying to serve my community the way I serve my country. And that's that's all I can do, you know, whether that be my veteran community or my uh, Baker's Kern County community. Right. And you have contributed well. And uh, I, I would say that that you are one of those examples. What, what happened to you and how you've recovered from it is one of those examples about what is beautiful about Bakersfield and Kern County. It is a good community. We Sorry. do help each other out. And it's, I, it's very exciting for me to hear that you want to give back. So we have you for a little bit longer at BC, right? 
Uh, well, actually, uh, I I just uh, made the transfer, but uh, you know, my heart is always gonna be with Bakersfield College. Transfer to where? Uh, I'm actually going to University of Phoenix for uh, for right now. Awesome. But uh, you know, my heart is uh, with Bakersfield College. Uh, no, nothing's gonna change Bakersfield College and the experience that I've had there, the the love and the friendships and the everything that was created there. Uh, it's a unique place with a lot of pride and a lot of history. You know, pictures of college. Oh my gosh! You know, so much history. Over a century. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I love it, and uh, you know, and the fact is that uh, yeah, things are better for the veterans there at Baker's College, but we still have a long ways to go. And whatever I can assist in in my new roles, uh, I've just uh, passed on the torch to uh, Miles Post as the president of the Veterans Club. Well, we're going to be checking in with him shortly too. Yeah, you have you you passed up the torch. Yeah, literally, Wes, he's a little bit taller <laughs> than you. Okay, uh, Wes, thank you so much. We're going to have you on again to talk about uh, what you're doing in the future. But thank, thank you, you so much for being on Equity TV. Coming up next, as we said, uh, the the new uh, head veteran, as it were, Miles Post. He is a he's a tall guy. He cuts a striking figure. Uh, we also have a nursing student who is a medic in the Air Force coming up. Plus us singing cowboy. Yes, you heard correctly. And we'll check in with Christine Din for some renegade news. That's all coming up next on Equity TV.